Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. We have a very special guest here, Tim Black. Tim, how you doing today? Man, I'm doing fantastic now that I'm with Graham Elwood on the podcast, bro. <laughs> well, dude, it was good. To, uh, I, I've been wanting to return the favor. You had me on your show last year, and so I want to get you back and uh, and talk about it. I was on my doing my super chat, and a bunch of people were like, when are you going to have Tim Black on? And I was like, well, I got to hit that dude up and get him on the show. So, um, Oh, man, well, that's very gracious of you, man. And uh, uh, the check's in the mail, so yo. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I like the way you, you know, you, you covered it up. You didn't tell anybody. I like that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's our new, it's a, it's a, the new era of payola. That's how it works. We just pay each other off. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I wanted to talk to you because we're, you know, you're obviously you, you, talking a lot. We're all kind of talking about this because we're getting into the, you know, it's 2019. So the beginning of the 2020 presidential race is, is, has begun. And we have a bunch of people throwing their hats into the ring for, on the Democrat side. Uh, what are your thoughts thus far of everybody that's that's said they want to run? Well, brother, there are so many people in this race. It feels like 2016 on the Republican side. <laughs> all over again. And and we know if there's any indication from that from that uh, election, uh, the Republican primary, we know a lot of these people are just vanity. Like it's just uh, it's just to get their name elevated a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, come on, no one's voting for Amy Klobuchar or Julian Castro. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You wasting money, you know? So a lot of these people, I'm really not taking seriously, but there are some that I am taking seriously. So yeah, I mean that's a good point because there's always and 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 in some ways, like I get it, they're just doing marketing dollars because now I, I, I didn't know those two people that names you just read up. I didn't know them until recent. I have never heard of them until recently. So I guess it's smart in the sense of just for, for building a brand, I mean, it's just marketing dollars. Like say you're running for president, get some interviews. Oh, look at that. Your profile goes up. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, come on, Chris Christie had every much a chance of winning the presidency as I do of being a ballerina. So he was just doing it, man, you know, in his tutu. He was in his tutu and on his twinkle toes, and he looked horrible. Well, I think, Tim, if that was your platform, ballerina Tim Black for president, dude, you've got my vote. Like, I just, just for this cheer, I just want to see it. Yeah, if you're that bold, Tim, you deserve it to win. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's talk about a couple um a couple of the Democrats that actually have a shot. I mean, Kristen Gillib Gillibrand or however is is uh, is probably not as close. But then there's but she has some shot. But then there's Kamala uh, and Tulsi. And while he hasn't even announced, everyone's talking about Joe Biden. And of course, Bernie hasn't. He, Bernie's been from what I, I did a, a story that <clears throat> there's some people kind of former staff members of hers are like, uh, of Bernie's were like, he's starting to do what you do to get ready to, to run, but he hasn't officially said it yet. So let's, let's assume he's not running as of right now. But what do you think about the people that have, let's talk about the people that, that have a shot that are running and then we'll get into the maybes. Okay. Well, well, uh, I think that uh, Kamala Harris is, is a horrible, uh, look, I, look, the fact that we even have a conversation about Kamala Harris just shows that the Democratic Party has no real core principles or ethics or even a vantage point. They don't even have a real ideology, Graham. I mean, look, she she's a, a woman, a, uh, an attorney general. As attorney general, she locked up more black people than slavery. Um, and that's that's real talk because California, you know, has millions and millions and millions of inmates that they ran through the system during that time. Mm -hmm. um, she was against police reform, prison reform, when she was in a position to actually do something about it. Um, she she wanted she wouldn't even allow petty um, nonviolent drug possessors to be free, even after a court order that said that hey the the prisons are overcrowded. Hey, I'm telling you, you already know you're in California. Yeah. So the fact that if there was a Republican running who was pro um, I don't know uh, pro choice, he wouldn't have a shot at all. He or she would not have a shot. If there was a Republican running that was against uh, Christian faith or Christian uh, values, they wouldn't have a shot at all at running. If there was a Republican, I don't know, who was anti-gun, they wouldn't have a shot at all. But the fact that uh, 
the Democrats have no problem running a candidate that is against some of the supposed tenets of the Democratic Party to me just shows there is no real value system other than donor revenue. Money, money is what moves the Democratic Party. Well, yeah, and I mean, you, you bring up great points. Also, uh, you know, I've taught, and I, and I tweeted this out when she first announced a couple weeks back. You know, she took money from Steve Mnuchin from One West Bank for her 2011 attorney general campaign, and then again for her 2016 uh, Senate race. And w weird, she never prosecuted the guy. I mean, is it, and, and, and it's just like, and I remember uh, bringing that up and then immediately like Hillary trolls or whatever. Of course, of course I'm, a, I'm a sexist, I, I hate women and, and I'm a racist because I bring this up. And it's like, it just shows they have no real, I'm bringing up actual where a candidate got their money, what they did while they were in office and they can never argue those points. They always have to play the identity politic thing because you can't argue with what a candidate did. You know, yeah. <laughs> you can't argue with what they did and who they took money from. And it just shows like, and then, and then she, they put out that, that thing a couple of days ago, she smoked weed, but I inhaled. And I was I tweeted, I was like, is, the, are they running a campaign from the nineties? Like who gives a shit about, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, and it's amazing because even though she had smoked weed, if you believe what she's saying, uh, she didn't care about locking up people who did yeah. um, smoke weed. Like she, she, those are the people, like she loves to gaslight people, folks. Um, Graham, if you ever watched like an interview, like she just recently did one on The Breakfast Club. She does this thing where she brings up, she tries to defend her record of incarceration by saying, I'll never apologize for locking up rapists. I'll never apologize for locking up pedophiles. I'll never apologize for locking up murderers, right? But, but see, most of the people that she locked up, Graham, they weren't rapists, murderers, or pedophiles. They were people who just possessed weed. A That's it. A plant. That's it. That's all they did. So, like, 90% of her prosecutions were that. Not the, not the violent criminal that she loves to paint this picture is the reason why we need to be tough on crime. Not to mention, Joe, when she ran uh, to, for attorney general... What she did is she ran to the right. She ran to the right of a somewhat or very, some people say very, very much uh, pr progressive attorney general that was running. So she ran to the right. She was Jeff Sessions, yo. That's who she was in order to get that job. And that's what the Democrats do, man. I mean, they, they and then just to watch her publicly talk like she's some big progressive as she's running for president. It's just like, what? I mean, it, they, they have, the, the, the Democrats are unreal in this regard. The fact that they, they play, they play centrist, they play right. And then they'll, and then they, they cry left. And when their their actual actions and, and is, is where it's, I, I'll, I'll never forget during this, the confirmation hearings, um, of, of Trump's cabinet, looking at Dianne Feinstein's, uh, Twitter when they're doing, um, uh, the, um, Mike Pompeo, right. Was going to be. And she was like, no, no torture in all caps. No, Mr. Trump, we don't support torture. And then she voted to confirm him. <laughs> like that's, that's what they do. It's like they, they, they put a coexist sticker on their Prius and then throw garbage out the goddamn window when they drive through the park and say that they're environmentalists. It's unbelievable to me. That's pretty much it, man. No, like I said, no core values. No. So what do they stand for? Do they stand for unions? No, they don't stand for unions. They squash the unions right along with the Republicans. Do they stand for the environment? No, not really. When push comes to shove, they support fracking. And Hillary went around the country, went around the country selling the country on fracking. So what, what do they really stand for? I, I know we, we can't say they stand for uh, peace when they fall in line. The only time they like Trump is when he's dropping bombs. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's the that's the catch twenty two. My biggest problem with folks nowadays, Graham, is that they they tend to believe that there's got to be a good guy and a bad guy. Right. Nah, there could just be two bad guys with different degrees of bad. Oh yeah, that's what. It, well, that's that's the thing because <clears throat> what Americans I don't think want to face the reality that America is an empire now. That we're the we're the we're the evil empire. We're not the good guys. We're not handing out Hershey bars to kids in Europe to liberate them from the Nazis. We're dropping bombs all over the planet. We're already going to another ridiculous coup because Venezuela has the audacity to want to do what it wants with its own oil. How dare they do that in our backyard? <laughs> and it's just like, it, 
and Americans don't want to face it. So they want, they want the bad guy to be a bad guy, you know, ugh, fang or whatever. Like they want it to be a, a, a pit bull that's got rabies. They don't want to see that it's, it can be anybody. It can be nice Kamala Harris who smoked weed. You know, it can, it can be any, anyone that's part and getting either paid by the ruling class or is just a member of the ruling class that is sticking it to all of us. No one wants to acknowledge, we don't have, there's no anti-war movement on the left. No, no, it's, 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 it's too much, there's too much money tied up in it. It's too, it's too advantageous for the politicians who, who need the donor money in order to run these races. Like if we don't overturn Citizens United, I don't think we really got a shot at having a real democracy. I mean, I, I think that's really what it is. And I feel the same way about Cory Booker, man. Cory Booker is a chameleon just like Kamala or Kamala. Um, he, he, you know, we know about his vote against the pharmaceuticals. Uh, we know he didn't want to be able to import these drugs from Canada because uh, he didn't trust those drugs from Canada. <laughs> They're the same drugs. They made the same warehouse, the same lab, and he didn't trust them. No, he just happens to take the most money from pharmaceuticals as anybody in the Senate. That's really what the deal was. So when we look at these candidates now, they're trying to morph into, uh, these progressives, um, they, 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 they move left, they move right, they move middle, then they move back left again because we have actually pushed the conversation where progressives uh, uh, really are the most spirited group of supporters that you can have. And that's the only reason why they're moving left. If it wasn't for folks like you, Jimmy Dore, myself, Lee Camp, many, many, many others, they wouldn't even be moving to the left in, in fake, a fake move to the left, like a, like a ball player who... <laughs> Twist your ankles. That's what they, pump fake, baby. That's what they that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's it's it's such a great point, and I saw it going into this last midterm election. All of a sudden, everyone became a progressive, and they were just slapping that logo on the way you go to the store and it says all natural, and then you read the ingredients, <laughs> and it's like with all these chemicals and sugar and nonsense, and it's just like I'm a progressive, so I always say. Read the ingredients, go to opensecrets.org. That'll give you the ingredients of who this candidate is because it'll just list. Like Krista Gillibrand, man, she has taken so much money from these massive law firms, one of which she used to work at, that one, the, the law firm that is defending Harvey Weinstein. She's mm. taken money from that law firm. Wow. Okay? And she was the one screaming to get Al Franken out of there with no due process. So a lawyer did not want due process. Like if Al Franken had been doing this and was guilty and was a great, you know, kick him out, prosecute, whatever, but just one accusation, get him out of there and you're a lawyer. Right. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. I don't know how you square that with the Me Too movement, like taking money from the Weinstein law firm. That's kind of crazy, bro. Um, I guess there are people going to make excuses for her. Uh, because once, once again, because identity politics, that's why I try to tell people like, because I see people getting upset because they, they look at identity politics in a positive way. They're like, we should have diversity. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. When people use identity against you, like when they, when they use it, they know that's a vulnerability that you have that you may want to see more women in office. So they use that. So they get the worst woman possible. Like the, the woman that's the ax murderer of, of, of social security, right? They get the, the woman who's the private charter school demon, um, a head spinning around, vomiting, uh, all types of body fluids. They get her. Instead of getting someone like Anina Turner or, I don't know, Susan Sarandon if she chose to run. But, you know, instead of someone you can really get behind. So they use your vulnerability. They know that you they know that you want to have a fair country where we mm -hmm. move beyond racial tensions. So they give you Obama. And you don't know he's like a scumbag, like like he's paid, bought and paid for by Wall Street, that he's this guy who's just doing this, this dance, this shucking and jiving dance for big donors. You don't know that. You think... Well, I said when he said he was a community activist, that's you know, I was out there in them streets in Chicago while I was out there helping those kids. You, Hillary, you were on the board of Walmart. That's what you were doing, Hillary. And you brought it because you wanted to buy it. So they use your identity, things you care about against you. It's like a vulnerability. It's like a it's like a cheat code, uh, so to speak. And that's why identity politics is bad. And that's why the Democrats employ it, because it's so useful. Well, the thing you're right, it is very useful. And and the thing about the identity politics is it, it, it's so selective because it's like 
yeah, I'm all for more diversity, and 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 I don't want to I don't want to quiet voices that uh, of different genders and ethnicities. So then, where was your outrage when Nina Turner wasn't allowed to speak at the 2016 convention? Where was it? Where was your outrage? I don't vote for Hillary. I'm a sexist. I vote for a Harvard-educated doctor, a female doctor, and I'm a Russian puppet. I, I'm sorry, man. I can't. I'm just. I'm just like. Where is it? You. 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 You like. I'm. Da- I'm so down with diversity, provided they're progressives. I don't need the diversity of the war machine. You know, like I don't need. Uh, I forget her name. Who was uh, Secretary of State under Bush? Who had a uh, mm. an oil tanker Loretta named Lynch? after her? Loretta Lynch. Uh, no. Um, no, I'm sorry. No, she's Attorney General. Um, uh, oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Come on. Um, Gosh. Why are we blanking yeah. on the? <laughs> She's the one who went to the Broadway when after after her, the Katrina hit. She was the one. Uh, I see her. I see her. I can see her, I, but I can't remember her name. Right I, can, yeah. I was like, "There's that diversity." Like Gina Haspel, first female in charge of the CIA. Well, she's go. in favor of torture, and she got off on watching people get tortured. Well, I guess. The equality of evil, then, that's just, hey, she can be just as horrible as a white guy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Even worse, because you think that she's not going to be. So you put your defenses down, you're like, oh, she's good. And the next thing you know, you're in a dungeon somewhere getting your fingernails yanked out. You know, that's that's how she rolls. Condoleezza Rice. Condoleezza, that's it, Condoleezza Rice. (laughs) Condi, Condi. Condi. Love from Condi. But, um, yeah, man, and, and that's... It's a hard way. It's hard to kind of like make people understand it, just how damaging it is. But you.